Hey there, let's play Solaris. I've been wanting to play this game for quite some time now, but never got around to do it. Um, and at some point, the game started to like text me every Tuesday. It's like, are you gonna play me yet? I said no. But then I said yes. And here we are. So, there's no way you don't know about this, but this is of course a 4X, XXX game. And it's a lot of space. So, you know, in the beginning, you get to pick your faction, but what this game really wants you to do, actually, is it wants you to create your own. And I played this game about maybe 40 years. Uh, that will make sense a little bit. You know, don't worry. I, 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 that will make sense later, I promise. Um, and now I feel like I can sort of understand what's going on here. So, you get all these options to pick your race. And I, let's go through this step by step here. The first point, you get to pick your race. Um, now the humans, the humanoids, excuse me, look pretty good here. You know, you have nice head of hair, got some nice styling going on. The death stare is in effect, but I have to say, uh, the stars are the arthropoids. Just look at them. It's this guy. Little moth. Hey there, how are you doing? Good to see ya! Uh... Uh, uh, are, are you okay? You look kind of confused. Uh, oh, oh, oh. S someone help! Uh, someone help! Hey! <laughs> So my favorite is this guy. Look how happy the banana slug is. Uh, is he gonna do it? Wait for it, wait for it. Ooh, I'm so happy. I'm gonna bounce up and down. I want to eat him. And then, you know, you have... I don't... No comments needed. Hey, I'm Joe. Nice to see you. Uh... My wife told me I shouldn't get any more plastic surgeries, but... Oops. What are you looking at? Anyway, I can spend a lot of time there, but we are going to pick our friend and yours, the parrot. Now, there's something about him, about a parrot that's wearing uh, <laughs> a spacesuit helmet. Even though he doesn't need to, because if you look, nobody else is doing it. Nobody else, even the humans don't have it on, but he's got it. And I think uh, this gentleman speaks to me some on some sort of existential, existential level, so we're gonna pick him. So this is where you name your species. Uh, these are all pretty good. Estragon! The UV Zent. Furo, Vasari, Sibylan. Okay, doesn't look like there are too many choices. We're gonna keep going until we figure something. Uh, okay, let's let's call them the Inarians. That will piss some people off. And then you get to pick names of sort of their generated names for uh, for your species. So I find it interesting that I picked a bird, but it defaulted me into humans. So I could go for the bird named uh, Yang Wan and Clara Duval, but I'm going to go for the bird names because we want to be lore correct. And I like this because if you go look to fleet names, you have everything start with murder. It's great. There's also this prefix for all of your ships, so it pre-generates or randomly generates the ship names, and it puts the prefix in front of it. Now, if you want to be really immature, so here's the ship names. You can see all, all of them has ISS attached. If you really want to be immature, you do this. Now you have butt, butt pounds, butt scream. It's funny, but we're refined here. We don't want to do that. So I'm going to call it HMS. Befitting once the most powerful navy on this planet. All of them are birds. 
Um, and then you pick traits. Traits, it's sort of like your species bonuses, your species-wide bonuses. And this is quite interesting. There are a lot of choices here. Um, it really depends. Some of them are fairly normal. Like, if you pick agrarian, you get uh, extra food. So this is, it costs two to pick, and then you have a total of two points to use. But you can pick five total. So there are traits that's negative, and if you pick a negative trait, um, it will actually get an extra point. So if I pick slow breeder, you can see my trait point left went from two to three. So for this playthrough, I'm going to do a really dumb thing. I'm going to pick this trait called Venerable, which means that all of my heroes or leaders get a much longer time span of a lifespan. So it's 80 years. Normally, your leaders live up to about 70, 75 years and they start dying. Uh, but if I pick Venerable, they live to 150 or more. So this is quite interesting, but it's extremely expensive. You can see it costs four points. So now I have minus two. So I have to pick a bunch of negative traits to balance this out. And I'm going to pick a few here. Um, now I read about this trait a little bit and I also played a little bit, maybe about you know five, ten hours or so. Also known as 40 years. Um, so there are some ones that's good. So this one is good to have. Not good to have, but not so bad to have. This one causes you to be slower if you want to move your population around, which actually doesn't happen not that often. So this usually happens if you are, for example, one of your cities gets full, and then now it's continuously generating more population, but you want to, them to go somewhere else, then this would uh, slow that process down. But you know, that doesn't really happen for a while. And when that happens, it's not a big deal. I'm going to take sedentary. And I'm going to take weak. This one causes your army to do less damage. Army are ground forces. Um, you Most of the combat you will do, actually, is going to be ships. So I don't actually think this is too big of a deal. The bigger problem is probably the minus 5% minerals. Uh, you know, resources I'll get into a little bit later when I start playing. But it's, it's bad, but it's not that bad. So that's all I need. But I'm not done yet. I'm going to pick something else. And we'll also get slow learner. This is actually terrible, normally, because what this does is that your heroes um, will normally gain experience by doing things, and this causes them to level up slower, in which case you don't get as highly leveled heroes. Well, that is a problem, because if they don't get leveled up and they get too old, they die. But I have this thing, so I feel like I can get them leveled up before you know they hit their age cap. So I'm going to pick this, so I can pick one more positive trait here. And for the positive trait, I am going to randomly pick from this list, let's see. I'm going to get, um, actually, I should have thought about this last trait. I, I was going to take something, but now I don't remember. I want to take Talented, which allows you to have a higher cap leader. Leaders are usually capped at level 5, so this allows you to get to level 6, but I don't want to do that, actually. I'm going to pick something with more impact. And I will get Natural Sociologist, which gives you societal output. So, research in this game is broken up into three things. Engineering, Physics, and uh, Society. So there are separate trees. And this one just allows one of my trees to go a lot faster. And I actually like a lot of technology in, in Society, because it gives you a lot more freedom. So we'll, do, we'll go with this. Uh, is there a difference? No, there's no difference. My bird looks the same. This is actually what I'm a little bit worried about, because since I picked the bird, everybody's going to look exactly like this bird. Uh, it's going to be hard to tell who's who. Names are pretty good. Wings of Magenta. <laughs> Clearly his wings are not magenta. Okay, can we make a magenta? Nope, that's not even an option. Can't change clothes either, because he's a bird in a, in a spacesuit, medieval spacesuit. Okay. I have a name for him. Yep. Uh, ruler title, I'm the male. So... Uh, bird? Okay. What do you want him to look like? They're all the same. Well, let's, we'll make him teal, that's the most colorful out there. So I have a mod on which gives me extra room options, and 
Normally, you know, the, the bird is in some sort of room, but I don't want him to be in that room. How about that? Burning hell. Well, maybe. Arrest him now! What? I didn't do nothing. Okay, that's pretty good. I like that. So what am I? Uh, that's that's like the view from my apartment. <clears throat> Okay, and now you get to pick your world. So this is actually quite interesting. It doesn't seem to make any difference, but you can tell this says dry climate, white climate, and then frozen climate. And this determines what kind of world you can settle. Uh, so you, you can always settle on a planet that is exactly the same kind. For example, if I pick continental world, then I can always settle on other continental worlds. And I can also settle on anything that's in this vertical column. So I can also be on ocean world and tropical world. But I can't, well, initially, I will be have a very difficult time settling on it, uh, the frozen and the dry. Um, and it, there's no gradient. It's like you, you, sh you don't gain anything by picking the middle one. It's just yes or no. So what the difference I found out seems like anyway, might be imagination. But depends on which kind of climate you pick you might actually have a slight difference in resource distribution. So having wet uh, tends to give you more food, if I'm not mistaken. And I think dry gives more energy and frozen gives you more minerals. I don't remember exactly what the distribution is, but that seems to be a memory. And I'm not sure if you, know, if you go up and down here, that makes a difference or not. So I'm actually going to start with... I have a... I have a certain strategy in mind. So I am going to start myself on a tropical world. Because that's where birds live. And what do we want to call this place? Y'all bask. Y'all bask in this. Cradon, Cradonia, na, na. This luck. What is our, what is even our species called anymore? I forget. I randomly picked something. No, I don't remember. <laughs> okay, I was gonna pick Matam, but nah, that's that's too late. Maybe that's also too hipster. It'll be funny the first five minutes, and then I'll regret it for the rest of the game. Okay, we'll give three more spins. Two, one. All right, Yaris, Yaris, good enough. A normal, perfectly normal name. That's what we need right now. Um, you get to pick your architecture. I'm an avian, so I should pick avian, but I'm gonna be be a contrarian and pick mammals. And then you have your government ethics. So this is interesting too. So you have a species, but then also you have a government type. And the government type is actually fairly constant. There's an ability for you later in the game to reform things. Um, but you want to make sure you, you get the correct one in, in the initial. And I have a play style that I'm aiming for. So this is sort of your wheel. You cannot pick traits on antagonistic or opposite sides. So if you are pacifist, you can't pick militarist. And you have three total points. This inner wheel that's uh, aquamarine color costs one point to pick. And then this outer wheel are fanatic type of this. So pacifist, fanatic pacifist, and they cost two points. So you can pick as many well, up to three, of course, as many combinations as you want. Um, for this playthrough, I am going to go for a pacifist playthrough. So I'm picking the fanatic pacifist. And what this does is that it basically makes that so you cannot declare wars. You can only fight other people when they declare war on you. Um, so this is going to be very difficult in a way, because normally the way I play these games is that I build a very strong economy. And then I build a very strong uh, army or navy or flock. And then I crush my foes. So this is going to force me not to be able to do that. And I'm kind of curious how that would work out. Later on, I'll pick it's materialistic. So very fanatically pacifist and slightly materialistic. I want peace, but I prefer to, you know, to, to earn my own peace and pay it for it with my money out of my own pockets. Yep. That's how it is. And then, depends on the type of ethic you pick, then you can pick two total civics. 
which are sort of bonuses you can get. Uh, also, you can think of it as sort of like specializations. And the reason I did this is I wanted to pick the agrarian ideal or idol. This thing allows all of your farm to also produce a single unit of unity. Um, that doesn't make any sense right now, but if you ever played Civ, this is sort of like social policies. The unity are basically like social policies. Uh, so you can get stuff like that. And then I will get Cutthroat Politics, which gives me one plus one influence every single month. So, um, well, you know what? I will just explain this when I get in the game. It'll make sense later. Did you know that my priority alert? Priority. Did you know that so you have an advisor. Power core has an effective blast yield of over five megatons of TNT. I in have. The event of a I had. I had no order. idea. Tell me about your favorite recipe. Okay, I also have a mod here. I'm gonna pick a Yukata Yuzuki uh, because I'm a weeb. All right, now I need a name. I can't. Why can I? Hold on. I can't randomize. Oh, did I not pick? Oh, I did not pick. Okay. I was like, why is it not working? I did not pick an authority. And uh, this is sort of how your leadership gets changed. You can be a democratic society. So right now, since these ones we pick, we have some choices. Um, but in some other cases, if you pick, for example, like you're f xenophobic or something, super super xenophobic, super militaristic, you cannot pick democracy. Or if you're authoritarian, for example, you can't pick democracy. Um, so we've gone through the trouble of getting our birds to be very long-lived. It'd be a shame if they get re-elected re every single 10 years or 20 years. Uh, and I don't want to be imperial system because I'm not old-fashioned, right? I'm a modern man, so I'm a dictator. Dictatorial bird, the ironic dictator, that's me. Now we can randomly generate. Nation of Yaris Prime. Mm. The Inari Compact. Okay, I'll, I'll take it. I should, should have changed that to Compact Disc. Let's do it. Yep. Uh, here you can play, make your emblems. I'm gonna make this into Dallas Cowboys. Uh, I can't do it, but close enough. So you get to pick your starting weapon. You can always research other weapons to change later. Uh, the difference basically is that projectiles are short range, high damage weapons. Energies are intermediate, and then missiles are long range weapons. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm playing a defensive playstyle. I'm forcing myself anyway to do it. I'm gonna pick missile weapons because of that. And then you have your faster and light travel uh, selections. So warp speed or warp travel is basically you can go anywhere you want. But it takes a long time to get there if you're traveling between star systems. Hyperspace travel, there are star lanes that you only have to, you have to follow on the star lanes. You can go pretty quickly on the lanes, but uh, you can't get to every single place. So there are nodes that will come up. And then there's wormhole, which is actually my favorite. Uh, basically, you need to build a wormhole generator or gate, and then there will be a specific radius within the universe or the galaxy that you can immediately travel to but this actually becomes strategically quite interesting later so just I'll pick that and I'll explain why I get into it it's been like 20 minutes and I haven't gotten the game yet and I'm you know I am a bird that lives in human cities and now I'm going to have a uh, muscaloid chips covering all the bases <laughs> portrait is so silly uh, okay looks like everything's okay I'm gonna save our birds and then start I'll do this on a large galaxy size, and we'll do a Spiral Galaxy 4, 9 other AI, so 10 players total. And then Advanced AI 1 to 3, Fallen Empire 1 to 3, I've randomized these. You know, These things, if I... Some guys will just start ahead of you, and then there are these really, really old empires that's stagnating. Um, when we can encounter them, I'll talk about them. Primitive Civilizations... These are people who are still using spoons to eat their food. Crisis, late game stuff, habitable worlds. I picked up more habitable world and everything else being normal. So there's something you can do here to actually limit how you can have faster and light travel. So right now, I am allowing everybody to have any possible thing. And I don't know if this is randomly generated for, for each empire or they have a specific preference, but you can sort of 
limit. Say everybody can only warp, everybody can only hyperdrive, everybody can only wormhole, right? So uh, for this, we'll do any. And everything else is okay, and I have Iron Man on, which means that I cannot save over stuff. I'm thinking about actually taking this off because I want to be manually safe when, if I, you know, have some problem with recordings. Um, should I do it? Should have probably thought about this. No, let's let's go ahead and keep it on. If we crash, we crash and burn together. Light my plumes on fire. The Inari Compact Disc Discovery. Uh, my name's Gas. Gas was feral. In the eons since the first primitive Inari community took shape in the dense jungles of Yaris Prime, our civilizations have spread and prospered. Yeah, whatever. Peace be with you, Serene Protector. I am Veer, a prototype synthetic intelligence. My task will be to assist and advise he you as we venture beyond the safety of the world. He's our AI helper. He's the same for, for everybody. The first time in history. So. I'm not going to have food tutorial on because he gets really busy and talking. So I'm just going to take the, turn the tip on because, hey, I played a little bit of this game, but I don't think I've even gotten to the mid game yet. So it's basically late early games where I stopped. So I think I know stuff up to then, but after that, I need his help. So we'll have Very well. tips only. Provide tips. Fifteen percent. Any basic functions and tools as you explore them. Okay, good to know. So you start like this. You are in a singular system star system and you can see there's actually a lot of stuff in here and then if you zoom out this is the entire galaxy so we started toward the outer side of one of the arms and you know this kind of determines how you may want to consider expanding which direction you want to go for you know we are indeed a compact disc you can zoom in and each one of these stars or these things is one of the system that that's you, right? So we are one, one, but one tiny little speck of light in this vast universe. I can't do a Carl Sagan voice. Uh, we're we're gonna conquer all of that. I mean, peacefully occupy all of that. Okay. This is our construction ship. Yep. Okay. So you start with a construction construction ship. This construction ship is not something that you use to build stuff on your planets, but rather inside of the, um, the star system. You'll see what I mean in a little bit. This is our science ship. Which is you. And then the science ship is sort of like a scout. Ice of Lavender. Beautiful name. He's not Lavender either. It's a he or she. I can't tell. Female. She. Okay. This is a problem with birds. And in fact, all of the sort of non-human... You can't really tell the difference between anybody. There's only like four portraits. They're funny. They are very homogeneous. Okay. I'm, I'm sure if I'm actually a bird, I can tell the difference, but I'm not a bird. Wait, hold on, no, <clears throat> take that back. I'm a bird. I'm a bird. Um, I will start by building a science ship. The science ships are essentially uh, your scouts. So exploration, as you can imagine, is going to be very important because you need to really explore the heck out of this thing. There are a lot of nodes. Um, so science ship is why you do that. And scientists are also leaders, so you can see here I'm, I'm waiting for research to happen. So right now the game is paused. All of this is happening in real time at some point. The technology screen is where we will be directing our research efforts. Technologies are categorized into three <laughs> different fields, with each field typically uh, three available research options. Okay. I kind of wish they randomized different kind of birds to populate your... Well, anyway, we may get that later. So you have three trees of research, physics, society, and engineering. And in this game, there's not a technology tree per se. What happens is that every single time you pick a research, you get dealt three random technologies out of a deck of cards, basically. Um, there are some of them that match where you are in game. So in the beginning, you're going to get a cheap ones. And then later, you're going to get some of the more expensive ones, depending on various things. And every single time you research something, there is a potential of opening another card in that series. So each card, it's kind of like a mini tree that opens up something else. Uh, but next time, when he finishes researching one of these, you could get completely new cards. So this is good and bad, I guess. You put a lot of RNG in here. Uh, but it's also a little more interesting because then everybody has a completely different game in the beginning. And every game is a little bit different. So you can pick one of these. Um, actually, I don't... Not really a big fan of any of these, to be honest with you. 
The Panion network is not bad. The Physic Lab is also not bad, but it's not very good for the beginning. So I'm going to start. Assist Research is okay, but um, you are... You know what? Actually, that might not be a bad thing. Let's pick pick this. So this allows you to hire scientists, and then instead of having them out there uh, exploring, you can actually have them assist with your research, which may be useful. Okay. Monthly influence. I will take this anytime. So if you research this technology, you will just get influence, uh, one extra influence. So here you have the resources every single month. The resources are energy credits, which is kind of like a combination between power and money. Power meaning, you know, you have to have enough fuel or you know power to, to power all of your stations and buildings and stuff. So if you run out of this, then you really get in trouble. Minerals, you need to build things. And then food, you need to grow. So if you have a lot of excess food, then your population will grow faster. Then you have influence, which is something you need in order to project power, like uh, build new bases, build new colonies, hire new leaders and people, and then do like diplomacy. And then you have unity, which is kind of like your social credits. The tradition uh, screen displays the. And this is basically social policy you can enact. Most of them just give you some sort of bonus. Uh, okay, and now let's finish engineering. I have engineering facility and mining. So I, I'm going to pick mining network because in the beginning of the game, you really want as much minerals as you can possibly get. It helps quite a bit. And then you need enough power so that your minerals can keep rolling in. And then, you know, you worry about stuff later. All right. So nothing has happened yet because we haven't, we built, we queued up a single science ship. So this is my planet. If you go Here to the surface, a representation of this planet's... you will see a bunch of birds that look identical. And there are a bunch of tiles. So each tile has a specific uh, resource or not. So this is the native resource that's on this tile. And you basically put a population of bird onto this tile to uh, work it and get resources. And then you can build improvements on the tile to get more resources. That's basically how it works. It's like sieves and you know having population on tiles. These ones here are not workable yet. They're basically like waste tiles, so you have to spend resources to clear them. So you can see which tile is being worked on. And you know, right now, I don't see where the next tile is being worked on because I'm paused. So once I unpause, it will start to generate a population based on your food output. And then your basically your population will grow. And then you, know, you can sort of drag uh, your person onto any of the tiles. So I don't want to spend any resources right now because nobody needs anything. So I'm going to save my minerals for other things. So to start, I will order. So this is a list of all the ships and stuff you have. It's a pretty convenient thing. You can also use uh, control keys to group. So if I pick military fleet two, used to protect. I pick my military fleet. Okay. So let's do this. I have three and I'm going to get influence pretty quickly. So I might think about also getting a general two in a little bit, but let's not worry about that. Let's go ahead and queue up my science ship. And the science ship, the first thing I want him to do is to explore this entire star system because I know nothing about my own system yet. So I survey the system, it will automate and go to every single one of these planets to see what's on it. Some of them will have resources, some of them have quests, some of them have nothing. Alright, so you are off. Let's zoom in and say goodbye. Goodbye, murder! Also, I have a mod, or I have multiple mods that adds music, or background music, soundtrack and stuff to this. So if you hear like FTL stuff, you're not dreaming. There's also like some other things, but I don't want to talk about it maybe because I might get in trouble. Okay, the other thing I want to do, which I forgot to do, is I can, I'm going to pause real quick. I can go to check my scientist status. So each of them start with a single trait. So this one says leader experience gain plus 25%. He says, oh, if I'm researching statecraft, I'm faster. And he is longer lifespan. So actually, I feel like he's useless because they already have very long lifespan. This doesn't gain me a whole lot. So what I can do is I can go to the leader's, the leader's tab. Lets us hire. Yeah, that's my governor, Feather of Grey. 
I can hire a randomly generated list of scientists. And so here are their thing. And none of them are particularly none of them particularly good. So speed in rocketry might be helpful, but I'm actually trying to find somebody who is in general better at everything. So this might be good though, because I have a slow leader gang, and so this will counteract that. Um, that may or may not be good. Also, this is age. Age is less of a problem for me because I feel like you know our birds are gonna live very long. So let me pick this. I think that will get him. I don't know. That will just get him to normal speed. So if he gains levels, he researches faster. I think every single level these guys gain, you get plus five percent research speed. But also rocketry is nice. No, okay. No, let's let's get this one. And I will assign him to do research here. So then the other scientists have no job. And my hope is that when the next science ship finishes, I'm going to send him on the science ship. Him or her, I have no idea. Don't ask me. Okay, so something opened up. And this planet here, you can see there's a little power icon. There's energy. So if I build a mining station there, I can harvest the energy. I'm actually not going to do that right away because I'm looking for one that has mineral. We have a lot of stars in the system, so one of them might have a mineral. Um, okay. Now, where's my science ship? Here's the science ship. I'm going to put plume of. No. Eyes of purple. Are they related? On here, and then send them off somewhere else. So I am going to, because I have wormhole, I can instantly send him to any of these systems within my border. But I will start with one closest because you can see this disk. This is my influence sphere. So I can build um, planetary, well not planetary, I guess planetary, maybe space-based improvements in any of the system that's in here. So I'm going to go over here and then have him survey that system first. I can't tell if any thing is different. You can look at the star. Class G star. This one. This one's class G star. This one is a class K star. So they have to do with the star age. And I'm not sure if there's some sort of algorithm that sort of control, you know, what kind of star tends to give you more planet or less planets. Uh, I think endless space does that. And then maybe galactic civilizations does that too, to a certain degree. I don't remember. But anyway. The reason I'm not building here because I feel like that this credit I don't need energy credits right now. And if they discover ah, they discover more stuff, I just I hope it's not okay. Let's do this. I'm also going to recruit an admiral and have them start exploring. So this is basically Admiral leads my fleet. She, she has recruitment cost reduction, um, combat speed, emergency FTL damage, and then leader experience gain. We have found an anomaly. Oh hi! From time to time, our science ships will discover strange things while surveying worlds. These can be researched. So this is basically a, a mini quest. Um, if you're sending out your science ship to explore, they may see something like this. But I don't want to do this yet because I want to survey the entire system to see if I have mineral somewhere. And it's not looking good. Oh no, there is mineral. What am I talking about? Okay. So take my robot roost, cre <laughs> roost creator. That's a great name. And then go to Draku. And I enact Draconian. Bird of gas. Why am I minus 25%? I don't understand. Something's giving me cost reduction in building. Oh, maybe it's the because the screen presents us with information. Okay, that might be a leader thing. So that's me. He's got agendas. So if you are a authoritarian or if you are a dictatorship, you have certain gen agendas that you will enact. So the, his agenda is any sort of station. It seems like gets cost reduction. I don't get it. No, wait. Okay, never mind. Space miner. Construction, mining station built, cost going down, explore, science built, 
this is actually quite interesting. Th these two are these two combinations are fantastic for s fast start because you get faster exploration and you get faster mining. This I'm not so sure about. I think this is completely useless. I don't think there's any way for me to change the agenda, unfortunately. So we're stuck with this stupid thing with military stations. Maybe we'll build a bunch of military stations. Who knows? Discovery of alien life. The HMS Appraising Eye. That sounds like a store. Has made a starting discovery on Soya ya Soya Soya Mama. One. The planet is teeming with alien life. For the first time in history, we have encountered life form that did not originate on Earth's prime. Woohoo! Okay. Okay, so this gives me society research credit. So, if you pick this, you will see there's 60 stored research credit there. And that, I think, will go into basically here. Um, it expands the research credit at some rate, so you get a temporary boost until that research credit storage is sort of used up. Okay, let's go back to Euros Prime. I'm waiting for my bird to drop. So next bird is going to come up here. This little blue bar shows you how much they progress in gaining that population. Until... Wait. Yeah, whatever, man. We're happy that we found life. Until he shows up, this tile doesn't get any benefits. So I'm not going to build anything until he's almost there. And then I will build improvement because I want to save as much mineral as I can. Okay, anyway, did I hire... No, I have not. I was gonna hire... Right. Okay. Oh, there's an inhabitable world here. So this one is a tropical world, but it's a small one. I'm not a big fan of that. I want to have bigger worlds. So they will, I'll let them continue the survey. But I can build mining stations here already. Uh, because they're within my border. And the border grows as your population grows, if I'm not mistaken. Let's see, I don't think I have anything else. No, there's another one here. So once this construction ship finishes, you can see the status. I'm going to move him to Trask 2 and then continue to build um, another station there. Because we're, our stations are cheap, so this is good. And at some point, I want to start cranking out some villagers. By villagers, I mean uh, colonization ships. And that's kind of the good thing with wormhole travel because you just, it's very, very fast. It's instant. Now, it's not instant. They have to wait for the wormhole to open up. And the, and the more, uh, more, the bigger fleet you have, then it's harder for it to happen. It takes longer for them to prepare the wormhole, but overall, it's not too bad. I feel like it's a more easier way. You know, you have to plan for it because you need to, if you want to go somewhere else, you need to start building wormhole generators at the border so they can reach. But it's, it gives you more choice, which is always good. You need meaningful choices to make in these kind of games. Um, and I think that is a very meaningful one. Okay, so we've been talking about this. We haven't done anything. Um, I'm going to recruit an admiral. And I'm going to recruit this guy because it's cheaper. There's no particular reason for it. Well, actually, you know what? Let's recruit, recruit her. <laughs> her because she will gain experience faster. Admiral is one of those uh, folks that experience gain can be very slow because you need to get them to fight for them to gain experience. And my slow experience gain might be a problem. So we'll recruit and then extend the fleet. And I'm going to do something to scout real quick. Okay, so we have... Right, hold on. Let's actually go study this anomaly. Wait. Okay, hold on. I can't. Ugh, wrong keys. Okay, so the first anomaly is free, so you just research it. It will never fail, but eventually after that, you get chances of failure. Wait, did we not do it? Oh no, I messed up. I, I called the other person to do it. Okay. God damn it, everything's happening too quickly. I'm gonna pause the game real quick. Alright. <laughs> Alright, you. Eyes of Lavender. Please go investigate. Eyes of Lavender, right? Investigate that. You, on the other hand, keep serving that system. So there's that's the other problem. I can't tell who's who. So I need to actually remember their names, which is terrible for me. Alright. 
So I've gained enough unity, and I'm gaining 4 per turn because of the farm. And that gives me the ability to activate my first tradition. And so they come in trees. You can open up any of these trees, and you know you can get stuff from them. So what I like to start with, actually, now I'm thinking about this. I like to start with a prosperity tree. Expansion is probably the, the best because I'm going to be expanding pretty quickly. But the problem is that I feel like I might slow down a little bit because I haven't found my first colony that I want to establish yet. So then this will help me a little bit. And I'm gaining uh, unity pretty quickly. So let's go ahead and adopt prosperity. And by adopting this, it reduces my ship costs and building costs. It will save me some minerals in the early run. I think I have a lot of stations that I need to build, so that would help. And then, we will send our murder of Burral onto a wild chase. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to have them visit a lot of these nearby systems. Okay, select him. Go there, 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 there. And what I'm hoping for is they can't do any exploration really, but what I'm hoping to see is that they detect some sort of habitable planet. And then I will prioritize on uh, using my science ships to study those. I'll just have them visit every single place possible. Now that I think about it, there's actually quite a few systems in here. Maybe I'm lucky, maybe I'm not. Let's see, is there anything else? One more? This one. Nope, I can't, that's it. Okay. Well, you have 16 orders, go for it. Enjoy the trip, Plume of Magenta. Construction ship is almost done. We have a pretty large, healthy store of minerals going. And if I get enough, I might think about buying this colony ship. Okay. Next one is... let's see... I actually will go ahead and put you here. I think I want to go to the next system, because there's four here and here. Wait, tropical world. I think that's habitable. It's also 14, very small. I don't want these small worlds. I want big ones. I want 20, size 20 worlds. Because your population will saturate them so quickly, they become worthless. There's only a certain amount of planet you can directly control. You can see here, 1 out of 7. So you only have direct control at 1 out of 7 planets. If you have more than that, then you have to put them into auto-governing mode, which is kind of annoying. So you want to make sure you have good planets that you're you're controlling. It's not a problem if you have planets that you put in auto control later, but it feels like kind of a waste if you spend all this effort developing it. We have found one of our old probes. Well, you shouldn't leave your old probes hanging. Okay. All right. We're materialistic. Okay. We're done. Oops. Okay. Oh, that was the. The whatever investigation. Okay, let's survey that. Now you're done. Why don't you survey Ascentia? Well, actually, no. Survey this. Because that's the other uh, planet that's habitable. Now, speaking of which, do I have more food here? It doesn't seem like it. Food, food, food. That seems to be all there is. Okay, he's gonna get on minerals, which actually it's not. Well, I think it's good. Some buildings may cause adjacency. Yeah, whatever. Adjacency bonuses you can build, for example, a mining network. No, a mining silo, and then all the mining networks adjacent to the silo will gain bonuses. The problem is that a lot of times, especially in the early game, you really want to build stuff that has a tile bonus. So if there's tile, there's bonuses bonus crystals here already. You don't want to be built anything else except for a mining network. So it's hard to really organize. Later in the game when, well, I assume later in the game, I have no idea anyway, when the bonus you get from the improvement itself is so much higher than the native, then you can start reorganizing. But right now, we don't need to worry about that. Right now, we follow the rules. Right. Okay, so you're done. Now, sending you over here to build a single station. That's actually very good. So this whole entire place has one thing that has four on it. Usually, there are two. This one, I think, is just two, right? 
No, it's also four. Man. Wait. Oh, there are two worlds here. Didn't even notice that. That's interesting. Wait, is there two worlds? Why didn't they show up then? Anomaly. Yeah, 0% chance. Okay, let's do it. Wait. No, that's not... I'm stupid. That's not a world. That's society research credit. So that's the world. Okay. Uh, without a doubt, biosphere, blah, blah, blah. Let's... Okay, this is also... So these are just basically little quests that you can do. And it shows up here. It's like, okay, you should explore eight habitable worlds. We can do that. Or survey eight habitable worlds. That's an Arctic world. We will never not be able to, to settle on that one. That's 15, which is not great either. I'm hoping to find some big world that is habitable immediately. And that's where I'm going to send my colonizing ship to. Right now, we don't have it. So this world also has a bonus, which is called Governing Ethic Attraction. So this is actually something I, I couldn't understand for the longest time what this means. So basically, you have ethics. Right? So these are your ethics. And eventually, at some point, your population will start to diverge from... Oh? Planet Modifier appears on Landis 3. Terraforming Candidate. Okay. Interesting. Where's Landis? Landis is over here. Saying that this place can potentially... Wait, what? It's already settleable. What am I talking about? So why, what is he talking about? What are you talking about? Anyway, let's go back and talk about the... <laughs> what this thing is called. Uh, ethic attraction. So, oh, hi. Ocean, ocean, tundra. This is good, because I think we can settle on both the oceans. Too bad they're both small. The tundra is big. Ah, uh, I hate this. All the world that we can settle on are tiny. Except for all the ones that we can't are big. So, ethic attractions, at some point, you start, your population start to not agree with everything you're taught, what you're doing. And they start to develop factions, which has its own agenda. So if you have a high ethics attraction, it makes it more likely that these factions that develops are more likely to have tasks that are close to what your governing ethic would be. So it's easier for you to accomplish them. And if you make your factions happy, if you accomplish those tasks, you'll make your faction happy. And if you have a happy faction, then they tend to give you bonus boost for influence, which is important. Okay, so let's, I think this is, this is a, a far enough thing for us. Um, I'm going to end this episode here. Uh, it doesn't let me. So he found an anomaly, which is level 2. And it's actually pretty difficult for him. So I'm going to actually leave him for now. And then have him do something else later. So I will pause. And then next time we'll continue this thing. So I'm not sure if I will make a continuous video. Which means that you know I'm going to play the entire game through on capture. I might skip some stuff later when it gets you know really, really... Uh, Difficult slash boring. Micromanaging out of... Oh my goodness! It's the sun. Micromanaging out of the wazoo. Um, but for now, we will continue playing every single episode and record everything. And then we'll see what happens. Thanks for watching. See you next time.